says and tails, call me Lucifer. That's what that represents. It represents the opposites, the fusion of things that are opposite together. So think about this. Think about black and white. Think about um, good and evil, yin and yang. Um, think about uh, heaven colliding with earth. Think about think about sons of God and daughters of men. That's what this symbol is. It's it's the fusion of opposites. Now everybody says, well, that's you know, it's it's like God. Because, you know, God has, like the yin-yang symbol. Yin-yang symbol says God has a little good and is evil and a little evil and is good. And yet the Bible says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Paul said, what communion hath Christ with Belial? What concord, what agreement has light with darkness, the temple of God with the temple of idols? They don't match. They don't agree. God divided the light from darkness. And yet the goal... The symbolism, the goal of the prince of the power of the air and the children who are part of the children of disobedience and the spirit that works in them, the goal is to fuse these things together. And this is, now remember the words, remember the words that, um, I can't remember that actor, Willem Dafoe, remember the words that he said, you get the car and everything that goes with it, all you got to do is sell me your soul. You get the car, and you get everything that goes with it. Let's keep watching. You the man. No, you the man. I'm the man. I have lots of girls riding in my car, and they like me. Now we're going to, okay, you see that right there. Now they're going to Sin City. Okay, that one was easy. That one was easy. Welcome to Las Vegas. Now we're going to Sin City. Now, you can have, with the car, you can have everything that goes with it. You can have fame. You can have women hanging all over you. We know what that's all about, right? You can have the forces of good and evil. You can be cool. Then you can have, listen, you can have all the sin in the world you want. No restraints, no restrictions whatsoever. You can have this because it comes with the car, all right? So anyway, and then we get to, um, I probably uh, went too fast in going from this, but I want you to take a look at this, this very quickly. He's on these magazine co Oh, look at, okay, let me pull it up here so you can see it. Look at there. He's on these magazine covers. Now let's look at this one, because this doesn't last up on the screen, but like a second, and then it's over with. Uh, the first thing jumping out at you, he has this picture taken on a white horse, and he's carrying a sword. Can you think of a verse in the Bible of someone riding on a horse with a sword? Revelation 19, Jesus Christ is coming back to the earth. This is an image of conquering. Um, in case you don't know this, all these cities with these... Former kings or former military leaders, they're all riding on horses and they all got swords. That shows their dominion. They're conquering everything. I want you to look at the caption, Van Vanity Fair, by the way, all this vanity. Look at what's underneath that. The return of the hero. Let me explain that a little bit. The return of the hero. The heroes were the men of old, men of renown. Genesis chapter 6. That's who the heroes were. The heroes were the, the sons of the gods who had mated with human women. That's who that was. And so you look at that image here, and it's all about the return of the hero. Look over to the left at the magazine there with his picture on it. A new class of man. A new classification, a new man, a new breed, a new hybrid, living the life of your dreams. Downtown goes uptown. You see the you see the fusion of opposites there. That, like I say, that only lasts for just a couple, like a second. You just flashed it. The image. Let me let me kind of explain this again. It's flashed into your brain, and then it's gone, which means that it bypasses the barrier of your conscience. 
and goes to your subconscious. And your subconscious does not have the filtering mechanisms that your logical, critical thinking brain does. And now it's planted there as an image. An image that, according to Scripture, should be cast down because it exalts itself above God. And so that's the purpose of it, just being flashed there. Your mind captured more of this than what you comprehend uh, in your conscious brain. Now, let's... Um, Let's see some more of this. Oh, he's got women chasing him. Ah! All right, here we go. Now he's a race car driver. Ooh, he's going to live the life. And oh, look at this. He's passing the race cars. Look at me. Now watch. So what you say. See the ring? Oh, wait. I don't have right. to sell my soul to the devil. But I think I got this. Now this watch. September, set your soul free. The seductive CLA, starting under $30,000 from Mercedes-Benz. Set your soul free. Because you're in bondage right now. You need to become a god. And, and I'm not making this up. You s Let me show you the ring. Let me show you the ring. See that? And it doesn't look like much from there. I zoomed in on it. Now, I don't know what that thing is there. It looks like a bee or maybe a fly or an owl. I mean, I don't know. I can't make out what that is. But right next to that, what is that? That's a Masonic square and compass ring. What does that tell you? Um, and then you see the, the last graphic there at the end. Um, this is when they give you, the, this is like the money shot right here. This is where they're going to give you the, the breakdown, the caption. Set your soul free, coming September. And the number 13 is in blazon. The number 13, if you don't know what that is, mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth, that's what that number represents. Uh, uh, Revelation 13. Go read Deuteronomy 13. Read Acts 13. They all have a similar theme and the truth of it is, any number, if you really want to know why the devil uses a certain number, go read it in the Bible. The Bible will tell you what these numbers mean. Um, I get a little criticism from people who say I'm using the Bible for occult numerology. No, I'm not. I'm just telling the Bible uses numbers. It has clear, defined patterns in it showing you the signature of God. Um, next week, next week. Uh, I, I almost can't wait to record it, but I know it's going to take it's going to take a lot um, to teach all the way through this. Um, restarting the King James Code series is going to be on the number seven, and I can tell you if there's any number, if there's any numerical pattern in the Bible that would just it would just prove that the King James Bible has a very unique pattern in it. It's this one right here. And if you'll, what I'm, how I'm going to try to present it is I'm just going to say, I'm going to show you the facts. The fact is, this phrase, Word of God, is found 49 times in the King James Bible. That's a fact. I mean, it's an absolute fact. It's an undeniable fact. It can be counted and recounted. And no matter what King James Bible you have, it's going to be in there that many number of times. And everybody can see the same facts. And so what I want to show to people is just I'm going to show them the, the accumulation of facts and then let people make their own decision. I'm going, to, I'm going to give my opinion, of course, but I think that when I first saw that, the first time I saw that pattern, I went, that's seven times seven. I bet, I wonder if there are other patterns related to that in the King James Bible, and pfft, there they were. Uh, anyway, let's go back. Let's go back to this ring here for a minute. All right. Um, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and this is all about um, a coming. 
It's all about releasing the human soul from the bondage, from the mundane bondage that it's in. How come we can't have all these women? How come we can't have this infinite fame? How come we can't be like a god? Well, it's coming to you one of these days. Get ready for is it get now is it going to come when they release the Mercedes-Benz car? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it clearly it sets an example to you, all right? Oh, by the way, we have a new sponsor for the Watchman Video Broadcast. This portion of the watch, this Watchman Broadcast, Pastor Mike Online Live Broadcast is brought to you by the Age Rewind, the Lifter, the Triple Helix stuff that you rub on something. I don't even know what this is. But somebody sent it to me and they say, do you see the Triple Helix? And I'm going, yeah. And the, it says it's an age rewind, which basically means immortality. It's the lifter. It's going to lift your mundane soul from the cruel bondage of the pit that it's in. And it's going to release it out. It's going to release your soul. And so, that sounds like all these charismatic people. Oh, we're going to release this on you. Because our God is bound up in chains, locked up, and he can't go anywhere unless we tell him he's, you can go now. I don't like the charismatic doctrine. I just, I really, I don't like it. Um, let's see here. Lauren asked a question. I'm reading some emails here. Lauren asked a question. Last week I did my first ever prayer fast, ate, drank only water, and um, prayed throughout the day. I was trying to follow Matthew 17, 21, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting, and Mark 9, 29. Um, and then she says, but afterward, I felt confused about the whole thing. I kept warning if I'd done it right. How long was I supposed to fast? Was one day enough? Or should I have fasted three weeks like Daniel? Uh, or until my sister became born again, could I have done a juice fast instead of just drinking water? Or like Daniel, eat no pleasant bread, no flesh, no wine. But not everyone fasts to offset demons. Some fast to get God's attention or as you did to wrestle with God and get him to bless you. And when I considered this, I felt more confused. I thought, well, now if I ever have a particular issue, all I have to do is fast and get God's attention, and then he'll hear from heaven and answer my prayer, which would basically, let me, and, and she says, which would basically turn fasting into a magic formula or ritual. And if fasting is now a magic formula, maybe I should just fast over everything. So Pastor Mike, I was wondering if you could help me to better understand fasting, and also to help me to understand why fasting isn't a form of magic. Well, first of all, let me say this to you, Lauren. Number one. God will give things to you because he loves you because you're his child. Not because you went without food. Now, I believe in prayer and fasting. It is a symbol. It's like baptism. It is a symbol. It is a symbol. It is a deliberate symbol of denying the flesh. When and you are now focused on being totally spiritual is what that represents. And we're, we're to pray in the Spirit. The Bible teaches that. We're to worship in spirit and truth and so on. And that's what fasting is all about, the denial of the flesh. Now, you ask whether or not you did it right or wrong. Well, there are, there are several things given to us in the Bible. As you said, he fasted from this or he fasted from that. Uh, the Bible does not command you that when you fast, you must perform this way. You must do it this way. Most of the fasts that I have done have been from morning until until evening. Um, I have never in my life fasted for like three days straight where I didn't eat or drink nothing. I've never done that. Some say, you got to do it that way. And I'm going, well, I don't see it in the Bible where I have to do it that way. Um, the key is, Lauren, is to let the Holy Spirit guide you. The lettuce. Now, God is not sitting in heaven and waiting until you are totally emaciated and have no ability to replenish your body whatsoever. I, from what, I, what little I know, you can fast for so long, and people have done this, that it's actually dangerous to reintroduce food into your body if, you, if it's not done right. Jesus fasted for 40 days. That's true. I have never felt the urge to fast for 40 days. I never have. I don't see the commandment in the Bible to fast for 40 days. But a fast, I mean, could, could a fast not be a simple...